Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rodolfo Hernandez Guerrero uh, from Intercultural Programs at the University of Texas Dallas. Thank you very much for joining us to this virtual information session um, to ensure that you have the uh, information, the guidance, the tools for a successful arrival to UT Dallas. We understand the, all the, 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 the process that you, you are going through and not only in, in immigration Terms, but also in terms of the logistical terms, uh, moving from your home community to the UT Dallas community, to your new UT Dallas community. Uh, next slide, please. Um, before uh, we start the session, uh, I would like to mention that uh, you can see us and you can hear us, but we cannot see you, we cannot hear you. So uh, in, for us to be able to have communication with you and to really respond any questions, any concerns or any doubts that you may have uh, regarding the information of this virtual uh, session, uh, we'll be opening a Q&A, a, a question-and-answer um, section at the end of this presentation. And right now it's closed, but once we finish the presentation, we'll be able to um, open that section. So for you to be able to write your questions and for us as an intercultural programs team to be able to answer um, your questions and providing links, helpful links uh, for easy immediate access to a guidance and, 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 and tools to enhance your successful arrival to UT Dallas. Um, it's, as, it's a, it is a tradition that we're recording this virtual info session and we'll be posting, publishing this info session in the YouTube channel of Intercultural Programs. And that should be published within the next 48 hours between today and tomorrow, the latest. Uh, and that link will be, um, it will be accessible to the web page of intercultural programs, the specific section for the international student orientation. Next slide. So today we'll be talking about preparing for life in Dallas with several topics like housing, banking, logistical information for your successful um, arrival to UT Dallas and to really ensure that you may better understand what are the implications and expectations for an enjoyable routine at UT Dallas. We are aware that you had many choices around the world, Germany, Australia, United Kingdom, but ultimately you have decided to come to UT Dallas here in Texas, Dallas, Texas, Richardson, Texas, and we want to thank you for that. Uh, you are pursuing a great choice. This is a great community that we welcome always international students. The presence of all of you as international students enhances the character of UT Dallas to really ensure that we have the intellectual plurality that otherwise we will not have without you. So thank you very much for choosing UT Dallas. And uh, on behalf of the intercultural program, certainly please let us know how we can help you, not only for your successful arrival, but as well as international students for any other aspect. Uh, that in campus through the institution, you may have some questions, doubts, difficulties, challenges, please let us know. We'll be here for you. This team is dedicated um, mostly to serve international students and we want to ensure that we um, reciprocate uh, the, 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 your energy, your enthusiasm to, to come to UT Dallas by being a good, a good host to enhance the hospitality, institutional hospitality for all of you and to ensure that you have not only a successful experience, but also an enjoyable experience. So thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please. Well, let me um, uh, provide you beginning with this um, slide regarding post arrival and transitional resources. This is really a um, team effort of intercultural programs in collaboration with many uh, campus stakeholders and community partners. Uh, where we're publishing a specific resources for all of you, because certainly we'll be talking a lot about what to do before arriving to UT Dallas, but hey, 
uh, what is happening once you're here, what the, the next step you have to pursue after arriving to UT Dallas. So we want to really be very explicit and really helpful in that respect. And so that's why we have this section, which is reflected in the next slide in a more visual way. That section includes, next slide please, institutional requirements. So basically it's a general review of the assignments and considerations you must complete before the first day of classes at UT Dallas. Also, we're presenting um, the uh, intercultural programs and campus resources, uh, including English support. Many of you, uh, you're speaking English as a second language. I include myself in that respect. This, my English is my second language. So I highly appreciate whenever I find that support, especially for new international students uh, who, is, who are speaking English. English as a second language. Also, I, we know that some of you are coming as a, with your family, with your spouses, and so we have a specific resources for your families as well. Uh, another subsection of that webpage is living in the DFW Metroplex, Dallas Forward Metroplex. Uh, this is a metropolitan area, it uh, implies about 6 million people, including in, in between Dallas and Fort Worth, and all the cities between Dallas and Fort Worth, uh, providing us an amazing amazing opportunity for art, for museums, for, for culture. And, and hopefully uh, through this webpage, you will find resources and recommendations to enhance your enjoyment uh, to be um, living not only in your daily campus routine, but also uh, beyond the campus to be able to explore the whole metro metroplex with all the amazing opportunities that this um, area provides to all of you, metropolitan area. And certainly a, a very important topic for you, thinking about your future. And many of you, uh, I believe, may have uh, your own uh, visions and your own dreams about what, what kind of professional academic space I may have in the United States while I'm pursuing my academic programs in UT Dallas. So we have this section for working in the United States. So this is really a very helpful section to provide you the, the ABC in terms of the requirements and expectations to um, enhance your um, successful professional experience, meaning how to to apply the knowledge that you're obtaining while pursuing an academic program at UT Dallas. So uh, please uh, visit this website, um, which is uh, again for survival and transitional resources. And, and, and again, this is provided by intercultural programs. And if you have questions, reactions, doubts about the, any of these resources, please let us know. ICP programs at utdallas.edu, that is the, that's the email of intercultural programs. And, and we are taking care of this email with our policies that we responded all emails the same day to the extent is possible, of course. So we want to really expedite answers and guidance for all of you and to ensure that you have what you need for a successful experience at UT Dallas with all of us. Next slide. Well, one of the key aspects for all of us, for any new member of the UT Dallas community is certainly where I'm going to be living. Um, well, in advance, certainly uh, UT Dallas has an amazing campus facility, on-campus housing. But unfortunately, there is such high demand for campus housing that basically on, on, on regular basis, this is in full capacity. Um, that doesn't mean that you should not apply to campus housing if you if that's your choice, but in advance could be the situation that, uh, that the answer is going to be with full. So, but really don't, don't create the expectation that um, this is going to be uh, an absolute no, because you will have options, off-campus options. Nevertheless, uh, one of the things that you need to arrange is certainly to live here at UT Dallas. Uh, uh, you need to factor how close you want to live to, UT, uh, to the campus, all right? Um, and, and that's a very good way as well to meet new friends if you live in uh, around the campus because many of the uh, members communities around the campus certainly are students. And so the, the other pieces um, to be aware 
that based on the high demand on campus housing, um, you need to be um, passed. If you are submitting an application and they're providing feedback to you, please respond immediately and, and enhance the likelihood to have your campus housing if that is going to be your option. Um, basically, we have a distinction between dorms and apartments on campus. Uh, dorms, they are furnished and um, apartments are unfurnished. So you may have that distinction. But again, the keynote right here is for you to know and to be ready for the likely scenario that you need to go to look, you need to look for off-campus housing, okay? So next slide, please. Now, if that's finally your, your, uh, your option, your best option looking for off-campus housing, um, there are many things to consider when looking for housing off campus, such as how close is it, is it to campus, how long will your commute be, uh, what amenities are provided. Uh, some apartments include a water and dryer, uh, some don't. Um, some uh, apartment complex may have a pool on the property, some others don't. Cost, of course, is a big factor and consider utilities as well, which we'll review later in this presentation. And also, the space, what, what is the, the, the size of the space? How many uh, roommates you may, may have in the same space or you want to live by yourself? This is important information to think about when you may be living with roommates. Um, and also, you may consider how close you may be to shops, restaurants, public transportation, and certainly, and most important, safety and the appearance of the neighborhood because your safety is our priority. Priority. For more information about searching for an apartment, visit our resource page. In fact, we have very specific uh, section in, in the intercultural programs page. We'll be publishing the specific web page where you will find very helpful tips for off-campus housing to really ensure that you are more strategic um, in that um, decision and, and also comparing between your options for campus housing versus off-campus housing, knowing that the likelihood is that you may end up living in um, um, on campus, um, off campus housing because they high demand for off campus housing. Next slide, please. Searching for off campus housing, most apartments include basic appliances such as refrigerator, stove, and oven. Some may include even a dishwasher or a microwave or washer and dryer. Some may have those extra amenities and utilities typically cost extra money. So the more basic the, uh, the, the appliances for the apartment, I, I think the more accessible in terms of cost is going to be that specific apartment. Uh, so you need to be sure uh, what are your conditions, what are your expectations, and to be able to compare between one other, between one, two or three options for your best decision. We want to ensure that you have the access to information for you to pursue informed decision for housing. Next slide. Now, how do I select an apartment? As mentioned in, in previous um, slide, um, basically it might seem uh, a little bit intimidating because it's a lot of information to be looking at, to be comparing between one complex apartment and the other. Um, there are many web pages that offer reviews on apartments. Some um, are listed right here in this uh, slide. Uh, the other piece is the Comet Cruiser, the, which is a UT Dallas bus, has many um, apartment complexes on its stretch. That's really important in terms of transportation to really ensure that you have an efficient and accessible transportation from apartment, your apartment complex to the UT Dallas campus and vice versa. Um, you can view the Comet Cruiser route uh, on the transportation services webpage of UT Dallas, certainly. And um, also there is a Dallas off-campus housing webpage that allows you to see the availability of apartments near campus. Please know that this ad is not affiliated with UT Dallas. Um, however, it will be very helpful for you to know that information. Also, cultural organizations, 
cultural student organization may provide support and guidance to students searching for apartments. Um, if, you, if you are from a specific country, uh, you may find out in the in the web page of UT Dallas, a relevant student organization from those countries, and you may reach out directly to them, and they may provide some good tips and recommendations for finding off-campus apartments. Um, certainly, um, there is good information in the web page there for um, you know our web page for housing, and that will help you for arranging housing, especially off-campus housing. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please. Well, the different topic right here is banking. Uh, that's important, money. And, and well, the banks typically have a variety of savings or checking accounts. Each one has different requirements and benefits. So I believe for most cases, for most of you, you want to have an US um, banking account. So if that's the case, uh, you're welcome to register the accounts on their web page uh, for each one of the banks around the, the, the campus uh, to understand which may be the best for all of you. Um, in, in general, uh, I would recommend to call, visit, or email the bank to get further clarification if you have questions. But most camps have very uh, staff who are available for you to discuss your option and help you to set up an account. And, and we're saying this because these uh, staff from these banks, they are familiar with the audience, with the community of UT Dallas, knowing that many members of the UT Dallas communities are international students, okay? So they will be ready to serve you in such efficient, respectful way. Um, certainly you should be able to find out what you need to bring with you to open a new account. Typically, what you need to open an account is an ID card, it could be your passport. Uh, if you have a social security card, bring the social security card. Um, if not, uh, if you don't have a social security card, many banks want to see another form of identification, such as your I-24 for uh, F1 students, or your DAS 2019 form for J-1 students, and other immigration documents. Um, you can always call the bank to check with do which documents you need to bring to open an account. Um, in many of these banks in the web pages, they have the chats. So that will be another good accessible way to have those conversations with the staff of the bank and to be ensure that your visit to the bank will be meaningful and helpful and effective for what you're trying to accomplish in most cases to open an account. Um, some popular banks near to, to UT Dallas are Wells Fargo, which also has an ATN on campus. Uh, other banks are Chase and, and Bank of America. So Wells Fargo, Chase, and Bank of America. Next slide. There are many different types of bank accounts that you can open, but the most typical ones that international students open are uh, checking accounts. Uh, for daily use, for things like shopping, paying bills, making a rent, a rent payment, and other expenses. Most checking accounts don't accrue interest and will be connected to a debit card. Uh, this, is, this is the card that you will use to make payments, a store, shop online, or withdraw money from ATM machines. You can order checks for your bank if you prefer to write checks for things, but at this point, mainly everything is electronic, so your debit card will be sufficient for your transactions. Savings accounts are good for saving money over the long term. They usually accrue some interest, is small interest, but some interest, and are not usually connected to a debit card. Many saving accounts have limitations for how often you can withdraw money from that specific saving account. And certainly credit cards, which allow you to pay for items throughout the month and then make a payment on the expenses you accrued. You will be given um, a credit limit for each one of the credit uh, cards, which is the most you are allowed to have charges at any given time. You will be charged interest if you keep a balance of your account after the payment period ends, usually the end of the month. Interest on credit cards is typically high. We don't recommend so to uh, maintain balances uh, after the payment period ends in the credit cards to prevent, uh, prevent you paying high interest of those credit cards. Next slide. 
cell phone communication essential especially uh, you 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 have been born with technology so you are required you need uh, by definition technology to ensure that you have um, immediate communication with your family with your friends and, um, and your uh, uh, close ones uh, here on campus but certainly around the world as well um, so when purchasing a cell phone a, a cell phone plan, make sure you look into the various plans and contracts available. Take a look at the amount of minutes available and what are the charges and limits for data use, use, for data use and messaging. If you need international calling, that will be something you will need to consider as, a, as well. You're, you're including international calls, consider that in terms of the cost benefit that may imply that service. Other items to consider are the service of coverage, you will get and how much mobile hotspot data you will have, what types of devices the plan offers and the content length and any restriction that you may have with that specific cell phone plan. Current students will have some great advice and recommendations. So contact your cultural student organization or other friends for suggestions. Popular cell phone providers in the US are Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile and Sprint but there are more, of course. You can typically find a, a retail location for your chosen provider, or you may be able to set up um, online your cell phone account or plan. Next slide. A student organization had mentioned that they have used Lika Mobile seen from Amazon but this doesn't work until you land in the United States. So please, please take into consideration that this is just a reference and we encourage you to look for options based on your individual circumstances, all right? So we have covered banking, cell phone, housing right here. I know you have questions. Please hold those questions. We'll open the Q&A section at the end of this presentation and you will be able to present those sections as well. We'll be providing many of the links that we had mentioned right here in the, in the Q&A section. So you will have handy access to these links, to this information for you to further explore um, your options. Um, and to take your own decisions before arrival, even arrival to UT Dallas. Now, I'm going to introduce my colleague, um, Raven Battles, she's program coordinator. Um, and I believe we're having some if technicalities right here. But my colleague Raven Battles is expected to be with us to present the next section of this presentation. And I will continue for the next topic and I hopefully expecting that she will join us and to present the rest of this presentation. Let me just send a note to her right here. Next slide, please, while Raven is um, dealing with technicalities. I believe we're trying to resolve this technicality with Raven and she will be able to join us with, um, a, yeah, without camera, so that's perfectly fine. Raven, please join us without camera and you can pursue the next, um, the rest of the presentation, please. Getting around. The microphone is yours, uh, Raven. Yes, it's waiting for the slide to come up. So there are several ways that you can get around campus or the uh, area around campus. Um, the, some of the more popular choices is the Comet Cruiser, which um, travels um, mostly throughout um, the greater campus area um, and some spaces just outside of campus. Um, it's free, you don't have to show any ID, um, and we have a link there available for more information about that. 
um, but that does stop um, in several locations um, around that will be close to campus. Another area that is utilized is, uh, for public transportation, uh, specifically just in the Dallas area, is the Dallas Area Rapid Transit. Um, this is a bus system. Um, kind of operates like a train um, or it's only really the um, local transportation that will get you into more of the Dallas uh, Metroplex area. We do have um, a great partnership to where you can get um, passes as a UT Dallas student um, that will able to really kind of help offset some of the costs for public transportation. Um, but as far as getting around um, the local area to and from campus, um, utilizing either the Comet Crozer or the DART system is going to be um, your best bet. Otherwise, you may need to um, utilize a vehicle. Um, there are renting options such as the Zipcar, or um, you can also utilize um, some of the ride sharing apps such as Lyft or Uber. Um, if you do plan on having a vehicle on campus, just keep in mind that you will also need to obtain a driver's license. There's a link provided for you. We also have sessions on how to obtain a driver's license, um, and you'll also need to obtain a UTD parking pass, which may also come with um, some additional costs that you may want to consider in your budget. Again, link is provided for you there, um, but just some things to think about when it comes to transporting your Yourself, um, and getting to campus. Next slide, please. So, of course, you want to make sure that you are um, comfortable and meeting your needs um, when it comes to essentials. There are plenty of grocery stores and restaurants that are on the Chrome Cruiser route and just locally around um, the Richardson area. Some um, recommendations there are listed for you. Um, Walmart will be kind of the closest option as well as the largest selection of just different types of food items that you can find as well as um, other items that can be helpful with uh, um, securing your essentials that you'll need. Um, some tips that we would like to share with you when it comes to utilizing grocery stores um, is Go ahead and downloading that specific grocery stores app that will allow you to get access to some of the rewards and coupons to know what is on sale, what is in that season, as well as it's helpful if you're discovering some of these shopping stores um, for the first time. They're often pretty large. And it can be difficult to find the items that you may be looking for. And so you can search those items in the app while you're in the store and then you they will tell you what aisle that item is located on. Also great that if you do have a vehicle that you are using, you can um, order your groceries beforehand and then um, utilize the picking up option where you can then have um, an associate load those items for you. So it can really streamline that shopping process for you as well. There are some options where you can, um, you know, get together with a roommate and bulk shop, you know, purchase several items um, at one time or multiple quantities of items. Um, this is what we kind of consider bulk shopping. Some options for you would be Sam's. Um, it's a company, a part of Walmart, but a little bit separate. Keep in mind, though, with those shops, um, they do require a specific membership. Um, and so you can inquire about a specific discount for students, but um, just keep in mind that bulk shopping does um, usually come with a membership associated with it, um, but it may be um, cost beneficial for you, especially if you have quite a few roommates that's going to be living with you. Next slide, please. Of course, you know, we kind of automatically think of food and grocery shopping when it comes to, you know, what traditional foods will be here. But there, um, the great thing about the DFW area is that there are plenty of cultural representation shops and markets available to you as well. Um, and so you can find popular shops that may carry your own um, unique cuisine um, ingredients as well. So I encourage you to get on Google or Yelp and and find those different markets that could be local to you that um, you may want to find 
specific items um, that can help you um, locate, you know, some dishes that you may want to create at home from your own home country. Um, and so we do have Asian markets, we have um, Central Market as well. Um, just several different cultures can be represented, not just in the big box grocery stores, but also in their own unique markets as well. Next slide, please. Restaurants, just some things about restaurant culture here in the United States. If you are dining in, it is an expectation that you tip your service staff. Um, typically that ranges, um, we have 15 to 20% here, but um, now it's kind of become more accustomed to have that 18 to 20% um, of your bill. Um, it's helpful, some restaurants will already have that calculated on the bottom of your receipt. And so you don't have to do the extra math, um, but you know, just have that calculator app handy so you can go ahead and make that um, calculation for um, your exact tip amount. Um, for larger parties, typically tip or gratuity is included. That's usually six or more parties, um, and that's where you'll see the traditional 18 to 20 percent on there just already calculated for you. But it, if it's just you, yourself, or your um, dining with just two or three other people, um, just go ahead and kind of budget and have that um, expectation ahead of time that um, you'll be paying for your food items, but also um, an additional tip to um, show appreciation for your staff. Um, since we are moving more out of uh, into a post COVID um, social interaction, most restaurants are actually dining in person, um, but if you do prefer to take your food to go, there are takeout options and some of those takeout options do offer curbside um, delivery to your car as well. Just kind of depends on the restaurant. Most of the times if you Google that restaurant or look on um, Yelp, um, they will tell you what those options are for that particular restaurant that you would like to attend. Like I mentioned, um, one of the food apps, um, Yelp, just kind of gives you a review of the different restaurants. Um, also may give you the ability to order, um, but other food delivery apps can include DoorDash or Uber Eats. Kind of just depends on what is available in the area that you will be staying. Just also keep in mind that many of the apps also have upcharges as well as delivery fees on top of taxes and the cost of the food item. Next slide, please. Here we uh, took the time to list some of the local restaurants that are on the route of the Comet Cruiser. So if you are going to be utilizing the Comet Cruiser for your main source of transportation, doesn't mean that you have to be limited to your food options. So here um, our one of our IPAs put together some of their uh, favorite um, options that are along have a good variety of Mexican food, some of that traditional Texas barbecue, Asian um, foods as well. Um, so a good variety if you want to get a taste of U.S. culture, but also experience some other cultures. And you can also, like we've mentioned, um, check out Google. Um, that'll give you uh, location, direction, reviews, pictures, um, pretty much a good idea of what to expect when it comes to some of the local restaurants. Next slide, please. So you may want to receive packages from your family or send items over to your family. Um, some of the more popular uh, mail services that are available would be one of the US uh, Postal Service, this is going to be the main mailing service, and particularly when it comes to sending those smaller packages and letters. Um, UPS and FedEx are also great um, private carriers. If you're wanting to mail items, they typically have, um, UPS will typically have its own standalone mailing services um, available to you. Um, you can always also get postage stamps um, from the comic card office. So where you'll be getting your comic card, you can also get stamps. Um, you can visit them in the SSA building if you are needing um, some of that postage um, requirements for then going ahead to mailing, utilizing the mailing services. Um, DHL is also another um, service. Just keep in mind, you may want to Google where those drop-off locations are or where those particular um, 
delivery options are available to you. Sometimes there's also the availability if you order through Amazon um, to utilize local drop off sections or lockers as they call them. Um, to kind of have a more safe and secure option for you if you um, aren't that comfortable with receiving your packages at your current, you know, off campus living. Um, there are options for you to utilize some of those local lockers um, in which you can just look up when you are utilizing that particular app or service. They'll let you know um, they'll give you the option for how you would want your package delivered. Keep in mind, there are um, a lot of peak times when it comes to mailing. A lot of people will utilize um, the UPS systems or FedEx systems. And so if you're on a time crunch, you definitely want to make sure you check those peak time hours again on Google so that you can see when would be the best time to get your packages dropped off. So then you won't have to wait in such um, long lines. Next slide, please. So kind of go back to talking about DFW culture. Um, one thing or area that we recommend that you take advantage of during your time at UT Dallas are museums. We do have Instagram live session dedicated specifically to museums in the Metroplex. You can check out on our Instagram page at UTD or UTDICP. Um, and which we go more in depth about um, the different museums that are in the area. Um, most of these museums do offer either free entry or at a discounted rate if you do present your student ID. So you can see a list of different ones in the Dallas and Fort Worth area. Um, great variety of museums um, and a great opportunity to experience not only uh, U.S. culture or different cultures within U.S. culture, but also just different cultures um, all together, whether that's um, through the different art exhibits and sculptures, variety of paintings as well. Um, so great opportunity to get immersed in some culture um, for free and at a very low cost. And again, we do have a dedicated um, Instagram live session that goes more in depth about this as well. Yeah, next slide, please. More ways to get involved in the culture. If museums aren't your thing and you're more of a visual arts person, we do have several different theaters and performance halls in the um, Dallas area. Um, these are great opportunities to utilize the DART system in which you can get to these um, orchestras and operas and theaters in the Dallas area. Um, Bash Performance Hall is in Fort Worth, so you may want to plan out your day for utilizing um, maybe more of the rental car services um, to get over to Fort Worth, um, but great opportunities to experience some live um, performances, whether that be through theater or opera, um, different concerts as such, um, which we'll continue talking about in the next slide, please. So um, again, if music is your passion or interest, there are different um, opportunities to experience the art, um, local artists, as well as artists that come into the Dallas area. Um, American Airlines Center in downtown Dallas is going to be the one of the larger um, area uh, venues where you can visit um, and see a lot of different um, artists, particularly ones that come into town. Um, some of the smaller, more intimate settings can be House of Blues, also located in downtown Dallas. Once again, um, utilizing that DART transportation is going to be um, your best mode of transportation to getting into the downtown Dallas area. Um, and um, just keep in mind, you know, when you are booking your concert times that um, typically shows in the evening are going to require a little bit more heavier traffic time. So you'll want to plan um, your travel accordingly. Um, but again, some great opportunities. Multiplitude, if you're a, more of an indoor music person, there's that option. If you like outdoor festival styles, Panther Island Pavilion in Fort Worth may be interesting to you. Um, Dos Equis Pavilion as well in Dallas can be um, interesting if you like more of that outdoor experience. So just kind of depends on what you're interested in. Um, there's a little bit of a lot for um, you just to kind of explore um, and find your own unique experience um, in life here in um, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Next slide, please. 
So to kind of wrap up on talking a little bit about social life, um, our IPAs did want to uh, share with you about um, some entertainment that is available. Say you're not looking for something more structured as a show or performance, um, but there's plenty to get involved in. And, and um, just to have a great experience, you know, it's what you make out of it. If you want to experience more of the social life, meet more people um, in the area, you can definitely do that um, by exploring some of the um, historic areas in downtown Dallas, such as Deep Bellum. Um, if you are over the age of 21, there are um, great draft houses in bars um, that are available that can give you a great uh, social life experience just kind of depends on what you are interested in um, you pretty much get out what you put in it and so if you're wanting to go out and explore a lot dallas definitely has um, several opportunities for you to do that no matter what you um, identify as or are interested in next slide please So just to kind of switch gears, a friendly reminder, um, if you are wanting to utilize um, the airport pickup service that our community partners, Big Howdy and cultural organizations put together, please do visit the utdbighowdy.com websites. We do need you to pre um, sign up and register for those airport pickups, um, both at DFW Airport and Dallas Love Field. So um, again, if you haven't already reserved um, your space to do so, um, to have that utilize that great opportunity for you to get that free airport pickup service, please do so um, sooner rather than later. Again, um, orientations are coming up here pretty soon, but yes, just visit that link um, for any questions about um, if you are uh, already signed up, if you believe that you're already registered, you can visit that website again um, to find the contact contact information for how to sign up for those. Raven, thank you very much for your uh, uh, comprehensive presentation, a very helpful elements and topics for new international students in preparation for their arrival. Now I will have a I will have the privilege, the honor to introduce uh, Leticia Samaripa, Director of Global Engagement at the University of Texas at Dallas, who will provide some remarks and welcome you all of you new international students. Leticia. Thank you, Rodolfo. <clears throat> well, uh, as you know, this is our last virtual information session. We really hope that this effort has been useful for you. We try to provide as much information for your pre-arrival uh, experience, hoping that your transition will be smoothly. You can get back anytime to review the information and you can find, as we mentioned before, the recorded links on our international orientation webpage. We are so excited and we look forward to seeing you very soon on campus during international orientation. We're ready to host you. We're ready to start uh, helping you with a very, very ritual experience here at UT Dallas. We are getting ready with all our volunteers, our orientation peers who are students that will be with you trying to help you out with any questions that you may have. And however, I like to clarify that even though this is the last information session, our channel of communication is still open until the very last before you get here. And of course, the, after your arrival, but we understand that even though we have made an effort to provide you with meaningful information, you might still have questions. We're going to proceed in a minute for a Q&A session for all your questions. But if after that you still have questions, this is our job. Our job at Intercultural Programs is to serve you, is to assist you in your transition, and we are very pleased to do so. So never hesitate to contact us with any questions that you may have. Remember that is our mission, so we are dedicated to make this happen. 
So I will proceed now. We'll hand it over again uh, to Rodolfo because he will be leading the Q&A session and we look forward to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leticia. Uh, this is uh, again the message from Leticia Samaripa, Director of Global Engagement at the University of Texas at Dallas, the leader of intercultural programs. So I'm going to open the Q&A section right now. And my very first announcement for all of you is all the relevant links that we had mentioned throughout this presentation. They include the web page into cultural programs, um, pre arrival resources, post arrival resources, housing, housing, off campus housing, um, the uh, Comet Cruiser, which is the UT Dallas bus um, uh, public transportation around the campus, um, the map of the, of, the cru of the Comet Cruiser, certainly of the bus, UTDB Howdy, which is a community partner who actually is hosting a welcome party in collaboration with intercultural programs on Saturday, uh, August the 19th. So you cannot miss it. You will receive information about that. We look forward to seeing you all of you in the welcome party for new international students on August the um, the 19th. And and also one of the um, great services that uh, be held in collaboration with intercultural programs and when with many other student organizations um, here on campus, they provide support for airport pickups, meaning for uh, transfers from the airports, Dallas Fort Worth Airport or Lothfield Airport to the UT Dallas uh, campus and surrounding um, areas. Uh, you know, so the only thing that you have to do is to click it right here in the web that I just provide to you and then you can register and they will follow up with you directly to schedule your transfer from the airport to the UT Dallas community. Um, so uh, you're welcome to publish questions or to write down questions, to present comments, reactions, and to the extent it's possible, Drevin, myself, will be able to provide uh, guidance answers to all of you. So far, no questions. We'll be waiting here just in case. Um, one question is related to um, scholarships. Basically, the question is uh, when I will see my scholarship fees on my bursa account. Well, actually, for any balance statement uh, reflected by the bursa's office um, in your account, individual account, it will happen after registration of classes. All right, so um, if you have not registered your classes, um, the balance will not show up. So um, that will be a key piece in the whole process. So first, please register for your classes and then you will receive the balance statement from the Bursa's office. All right, one more question. As international students, how much minimum money should we carry and which uh, in what kind of form we can bring this money to the campus? That's a very good question for which we have a very, very uh, relative answer because, <coughs> excuse me, the amount of money that you can bring um, upon arrival to the UT Dallas community, that will depend on your circumstances and as well on your expectations and standards of life. So um, that, that I would recommend to contact other colleagues that you may have here on campus from other international students to obtain more specific guidance in, in that respect. Um, we may have some guidance in the web page intercultural programs. I will recommend you to um, review the section of housing to be able to find more um, guidance in that respect and to have more specific numbers in terms of um, standard average uh, housing cost living costs here on campus, all right? Um, in, the, in the United States, cash basically is no use anymore, okay? So uh, again, I think as we mentioned, the recommendation is that if you bring cash, um, so be careful with that. 
And, and the very first thing that you had to do once you're here with that cash is to open a banking account, deposit your money, and then to be able to use your um, debit card for any transaction, because basically everything has become um, electronic in terms of um, transaction, financial transaction here in the United States. Okay, um, one more question is, um, Regarding the student health insurance plan, is uh, they're asking if the I either is including the I insurance. So that's a very good question. In principle, my understanding is no, it's not included the I insurance. However, you can purchase the I insurance piece um, uh, once you're here. Uh, that question is more specific uh, for the Student Health Center. So my recommendation is to send an email to the Student Health Center directly and to um, begin the conversation with them before arrival. But um, even before you're communicating with the Student Health Center, please visit the web page of this Student Health Center where you will find more specific information regarding the student um, health insurance and all the policy in terms of what is covered, what is not covered, and the um, complement that you can purchase to have a whole, full comprehensive um, protection based on your individual circumstances. Okay, so um, let's see one more question. What is the due date for education fee payments? Okay, for in that respect, certainly the best resource is the, uh, to consult uh, the academic calendar for the semester of fall 2023. Uh, Leticia has published that information already. So you will find a specific deadline for your uh, payment of tuition and fees. Uh, please be respectful of those deadlines. In the United States, deadline is a very um, um, clear concept, culturally speaking, and, and there is no much flexibility regarding deadlines. So don't expect any individual negotiation with individual offices because uh, rules, regulations um, are very clear and are highly respected by the members of the UT Dallas community. So if the specific deadline is in place, respect the deadline and pay on time to prevent fees or unnecessary fees for your um, for your semester. Okay, my visa, another question, my visa process is still ongoing. What is the light, um, what are the possibilities of getting accommodation when I, I am able to be there? Well, certainly the, the earlier, the better in terms of your housing options. So even if you're still in the immigration process, waiting for your visa, et cetera, I highly recommend you to contact the different um, apartment complexes and compare it. Certainly, you don't have to sign any lease, any contract until you have the certainty that you're coming to, um, um, coming to UT Dallas in this semester, but at least to ensure that you have the information that you need for your final decision. And creating a scenarios, uh, because if for some reason, based on the time length that you have to be waiting for your visa process, immigration process, uh, your option A is not available, you need to be ready for option B, D, D. Be strategic, create your scenarios and create different options, housing options to ensure that regardless of your, uh, the immigration process, you may have options um, on campus or uh, off campus, certainly. Okay. Um, one question uh, says uh, that they are ready, they register for classes and in the bursa account shops are regular tuition fees. So uh, is that the case? And you have further question about that, please contact Bursa's office. All right, go to the web page of Bursa's office and you present your question, your concern, and they will be able to assist you. Uh, to answer specifically that question, is very individual. So each one of you will have different circumstances, individual uh, variables uh, that the Bursa office will be factoring to really generate uh, a tuition statement or a balance statement for each one of you. So please 
contact um, the Bursa's office directly to present your questions, your doubts. And as a matter of fact, we have a virtual information session recorded that is available in, uh, in the Intercultural Programs YouTube channel. And I include that link of the Intercultural Programs YouTube channel where you find all the virtual information sessions. And one of them is about paying tuition and fees in collaboration with the Bursa's office. I highly recommend you to watch that virtual information that will answer many of these questions regarding paying tuition and fees, including how to transfer money, for instance, and, and deadlines, etc. It's a very comprehensive presentation, again, in collaboration with the Bursa's office. Um, uh, well, basically, there is one good question. Where, when can I get a campus job? Um, well, if, first of all, you need to arrive. Okay. Once you come to UT Dallas campus, the very first thing is to settle down, to begin your classes, and to ensure that you have a solid and successful beginning of your academic journey at UT Dallas. And then, certainly, to visit the Career Center, University Career Center, to obtain guidance about what to do and how to obtain um, the immigration, um, uh, the immigration uh, permissions, approvals to be able to work in the United States and specifically on campus. So step by step, in most cases, our recommendation is to arrive, settle down during the first semester to be able to uh, cope and overcome any cultural shock, any cultural challenge, and to ensure that you are successfully settled down to begin to continue your journey here at UT Dallas. So our recommendation is to uh, consider campus jobs uh, if you feel that it will be in balance with academic responsibilities by the second semester of your um, um, of your program at UT Dallas. Okay. So one more question. Um, I, I can see several questions regarding scholarships. Um, if you have um, a assistantship um, a, a, a position as a graduate student, mainly for doctoral students, uh, it will be it will cover your health insurance or any other scholarship. You need to contact the specific uh, uh, provider of that specific scholarship to find out when is going to be uh, the specific deadlines or payments or uh, uh, payment of tuition for that specific scholarship to ensure that you have accurate information. All right. Um, there is one specifically that are asking about um, AES. So please uh, contact the Academy Excellence Scholarship that is basically managed directly by the Office of Admission and Enrollment. Um, and that's uh, basically offered for freshmen um, students, students that are beginning their bachelor programs at UT Dallas. So please contact the um, Office of Admission and Enrollment who will be able to provide that specific guidance. Um, how to apply for a teaching assistantship, a research assistantship, or any other academic um, assistantship at UT Dallas? Well, um, um, the recommendation is to have a conversation with your academic advisor in the, in the corresponding academic program in which you are pursuing your degree, and then to present your credentials and, and to obtain guidance about how to apply for a TA RA position. These positions, the teaching assistantship, research assistantship positions, are highly competitive. And as you may assume, uh, resources are limited. So uh, basically, they are signing on very competitive basis and mainly for um, um, PhD students, for doctoral students. But hey, you're welcome to, to have a conversation with your academic advisor who may provide further guidance in terms of um, the corresponding administrator in the academic program in which you are pursuing your program at UT Dallas. Um, there is another one here. It says, I have enrolled in an online class after um, turning status to green. Let me see it, uh, exactly. Now. 
Well, basically it's asking about uh, the status of a class enrollment. Um, well, in, in that case, you need to contact the office of the registrars to see what is exactly the status of that class. And actually, I will I will be more specific. If you have any question regarding your enrollment in a specific classes, regardless online classes or in person classes, please contact your academic advisor. They will be able to provide uh, the specific guidance, and don't wait. Uh, for um, or don't assume that everything is fine if you think there is a question or you have a concern about that. And um, if they are working for you to provide you guidance and to ensure that you pursuing a appropriate academic decisions in the registration of those specific courses. So please contact your academic advisor and they will be able to uh, provide the guidance and ensure that if your enrollment is correct, and is in alignment with the um, specific requirements of your academic program at UT Dallas. Um, uh, somebody's asking about the, what is the GPA requirement for the scholarships? Well, we have many scholarships here on campus and each one of them may require different GPA, but in advance, a competitive GPA based on the um, great scale that we have at UT Dallas in general in the United States, which is from one to four, it will be 3.0 above. But many competitive scholarships are requested even higher uh, GPA. The higher the GPA, the closer to four, uh, more chances, the likelihood will be much higher uh, to be able to compete for the scholarships, all right? Um, well, one question is, I didn't get a scholarship during admissions. The question is, can I, I will be able to get a scholarship in the second year? Absolutely. I mean, if you really demonstrate your academic excellence during the first year, you're welcome to reapply for a specific scholarships and to compete again for those scholarships. Of course, ultimately it's subject to the deliberation of the committee or the individual administrators that are managing the specific scholarship for them to provide you a final decision. But hey, if, uh, if you demonstrate academic excellence, you're welcome to apply again for the scholarships and to demonstrate that you can be competitive enough to obtain scholarships in the second semester, in the next year of your academic program. Um, but again, subject to the deliberation of the committee or the administrator managing that specific scholarship. Um, where can I apply for a social security number? Great question for those one thinking to work on campus um, and or off campus after graduating from UT Dallas. Well, uh, first of all, you need to have a job offer to be able to a apply for a social security number. So let's say that you're coming to UT Dallas in the fall and in the spring you get a job, you obtain, you apply for a job on campus, let's say in the cafeteria, and if that's the case, they will provide you the evidence of that uh, job offer. So you will be able to present that job offer to the social security authority here in the United States to obtain such social security number. And that will be a requirement, a condition for anybody to work in the United States, including campus jobs. So um, step by step, you need to be here first, you need to apply, you need to uh, obtain a job, not to, to uh, um, receive a job offer to be able to apply for social security. Um, Uh, well, basically, one question related to the in-state tuition versus scholarships. Um, if if you if you receive a competitive scholarship, um, you may be eligible for in-state tuition. Yes, and as long as you maintain that scholarship, your tuition will be um, again in-state tuition. In-state tuition is basically for Texas residents. Uh, but in this case is considered 
uh, in a state tuition for a uh, base on the criteria of the scholarship all right and only for tuition purposes is not for immigration purposes let's have this clear distinction okay so if you're obtaining a as a competitive scholarship, you may be eligible for in-state tuition only for purposes of this tuition, not for purposes of the immigration. Um, so, uh, of course, each scholarship is different and it may not guarantee such privilege, but certainly uh, information is available in the Office of Financial Aid and you will be able to obtain more information and contact information for, for any questions that regarding the application process for these scholarships and, and, the, and the privileges if you obtain that scholarship, okay? Um, so there is one more question, muy, very academic. It says basically, can we change business analytics course from cohort to flex? That's a question that should be submitted to the, your academic advisor. In this case, specifically to the Gindali uh, uh, School of Management in the in the program of anal analytics. So uh, present that question to them and they will provide the specific guidance. All right, I think. I think we have covered most questions right here. And thank you very much for participating, for joining us. Again, this session is recorded and will be published in the uh, YouTube channel, Intercultural Programs. And in, if you have additional questions, comments, concerns, feel free to send us an email to icpprograms.utdallas.edu. As Leticia Samaripa has mentioned, uh, we are dedicated for all of you to really ensure that you have a smooth transition from your home community to your new community, which is going to be the UT Dallas community. We look, we look forward to hosting you on campus, and specifically with your participation in the in-person international student orientation. We're beginning the first international student orientation on August the 1st. We're so excited to start welcoming all of you to the UT Dallas campus. But um, between now and then, remember we we are, we are accessible through the email. We'll be happy to answer any of the questions. And so we look, we look forward to see you around campus. And thank you very much for your participation again. Have a great evening, afternoon. And one more item. We want to welcome you as well to um, another virtual info session that is not really within the series that we have in preparation for the fall 2022 International Student Orientation. But this is basically a um, um, customized session in collaboration with the Indian Student Association that we are going to offer this Friday. And mainly the intention for this virtual information session um, on Friday is, um, is to share practical tips to arrive successfully to UT Dallas, specifically explaining the partnership that we have with Bihauri, which is a community partner, to um, to, uh, uh, to uh, facilitate pickups at um, Dallas airports, the Dallas Fort Worth Airport, Dolphin Airport, and to schedule your transfer from the airport once you're landing here to, to the United States, to these airports, to the campus community, it could be the UT Dallas campus or surrounding areas. And so it's going to be very helpful. It's going to be mainly about logistics in terms of a successful arrival and certainly for, um, a, for us, all of us in collaboration with Big Harry, a, to welcome you and to remind you about the welcome party that we'll be offering you, we'll be offering for new international students on Saturday, a, August the 19th. So this virtual info session, it will be via Microsoft Teams. It will be on July the 21st, Friday, from nine o'clock to 10 a.m. U.S. Central Time. OK, so you're welcome to join us as well. And in fact, what I will do right here, I will publish this as an announcement 
and you will be able to see the specific link uh, from our Comet calendar and, and which includes the Microsoft Teams link for you to participate this coming Friday and obtaining more guidance for the logistics of these pickups um, in collaboration with Behavi. Community partner. And again, this session will be in collaboration with um, the Indian Student Association. All right. Well, thank you very much. Have a wonderful Wednesday, uh, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or good night. Thank you.